from UI Agency. And I'm very happy to be here today at Voice Global to talk about the age of assistance with Ricardo. Hi, my name is Ricardo Lopetrone. I'm a senior product manager for the Swisscom Voice Assistant at Swisscom, and uh, I'm happy to give you a short uh, overview of our project today, together with Christoph. So I wanted to start with a quote that Brad Kinsella, well known to the voice community, gave uh, in a podcast just recently when a podcast that we recorded together with two colleagues and myself and Brett on the topic of custom voice assistance. And Brett said, I predicted in early 2019 that Alexa will eventually be known as the assistant that launched a thousand assistants. So basically, he was saying Alexa and, and Google, they have paved the way, but uh, there's potentially many more assistants to come. And that's exactly what we're going to look at a little bit today. So a look into the future. You will talk to, to very different kinds of assistants. You will ask, hey, Google, I'm looking for a great Italian restaurant close to here. You will ask Alexa, hey, I'm, I'm looking for a romantic Valentine's Day gift. What would you recommend? But at the same time, you will say, for example, hey, Swisscom, what's on for tonight? I'm looking forward to a nice TV night. And there might be other brands that, uh, that have their own custom assistant which fulfills a certain need that um, the customers of these brands have. So why do I think we should think about brands having their own assistance? So if you think about um, valuable brands today, some brand names actually became so iconic that they even became product names. So you refer to, for example, a Q-tip as a general product. You say, do you still have Q-tips? Or you say, hand me a Kleenex. And when we move to the age of assistance, in the future, brand names will actually come to stand for a whole experience. So the question is, which brand will in the end stand for an enjoyable coffee experience? Which brand will stand for the perfect do-it-yourself experience? And basically, we think that the future is already there. And we have embarked on this future, for example, with uh, Swisscom in building this, uh, this custom voice assistant for Switzerland, Hey Swisscom, and that's why I'm very happy at that point to pass it on to Ricardo to tell you more about this fascinating project. Hey, thanks, Christoph. Let's start with a short introduction video of our Swisscom voice assistant. Here it is, your new Swisscom box. It gives you access to a universe of content and finds your favorite TV program from hundreds of sources. All you have to do is talk to it. Just say, hey, Swisscom, and off you go. Hey, Swisscom, turn on the TV, turn it down, turn it up, go to CNN, start Netflix, search for Family Guy, Sport, Crime Show, Brad Pitt movies. But that's not all it can do. It can also play your favorite music, control your lighting, and even tell you what tomorrow's weather will be like. Cloudy all day. All of this in your Swisscom box. Discover it now and start your life together. Your new Swisscom box. So much more than TV. I'll give you some key figures around Swisscom. So Swisscom is the leading telecommunication company in Switzerland. We have around 90,500 employees. We had a revenue of 11.45 billion last year. And we're owned by... 51% by the Swiss Confederation. We have around 6.4 million mobile customers, 4.6 million broadband customers, and 1.5 million TV customers. Why did we build our own voice assistant? Let's look at the uh, decision criteria uh, which we took into account and uh, which at the end uh, made us decide to build a own solution. So if you build an, a, an application on existing platform, such as Alexa or Google, then of course you have a, a lower effort, lower investment risk and costs, and you have also a, a faster go-to-market. Additionally, you profit from the continuous platform enhancements given by Google or Amazon, you are building your uh, skill on. The advantages are that uh, your brand is in the background, hidden, uh, behind the, the wake world of this platform normally. Then you don't have full control over uh, your data protection. You most likely have less insight in your data analytics of your customers. And you are always dependent on the partner platform. So on the other hand, 
if you build your own solution, you can choose a proprietary wake word, as we did with our Hey Swisscom. Then you have more flexibility in the, in the experience design. You can do a deeper backend integration since you own all the components. And you can keep a, a more direct customer contact. The downsides of uh, building your own solution is, of course, the project complexity. Then you might raise high customer expectations since you will be compared with uh, big players. You need, need very high know-how for uh, of the requirements. And you will probably be uh, limited from a product scope point of view. You will never be able to build like 100,000 skills uh, as an Alexa is offering today and on its platform. The second question you, you might ask yourself is why did we build it on a TV box and not on a separate smart speaker, like for example, the Deutsche Telekom did with their Magento speaker. So the reason why is that the TV is our hero product. So uh, the most new customers who are come to Swisscom, they buy a complete bundle, including TV, telephony, and the uh, internet. So doing so, uh, we didn't have to promote a separate device. And this allows us, of course, faster market uh, penetration. What are the challenges? So uh, given that we only have this single device integrated in the, the TV box, and we don't have a standalone device, we are limited to the living room of the customer. So this box is mostly installed uh, beneath the TV device. And so uh, for some skills, we are still limited, for example, for smart home or for music, the customer can only use these skills when it's in the living room or in that room where he also has a TV device. Then the second challenge is that we are in a, uh, in a dependency together with the TV team. Uh, so if I want to develop a voice feature, I also always need to be prioritized against other TV features, which should also be uh, implemented on this box. Let's have a look now at all the pieces which were needed to uh, build such a platform. And I'll start with the hardware. As I uh, just mentioned, we integrated our voice assistant on, a, on our newest TV box. This is a normal TV box with UHD and HDR capability. Additionally, we placed two far field microphones on the front. Why just on the front and not on the 360 area on the box? This is because the TV box is mostly put in front of a wall. And so you don't need microphones which show uh, to the back of the box. Then we also have an audio speaker who hear the voice of the assistant, but also for some uh, audio output possibilities when you listen to radio, for example. And we have also an additional microphone on the remote control. For those people who don't want to use far field voice, they can deactivate the microphones on the box and they still can use the push to talk a solution on our remote control. Let's go to the wake word. Why did we decide to take Hey Swisscom as the wake word of our voice assistant? And we didn't, why did we not choose a completely new name like Heidi, for example, which have been suited very well for Switzerland? So a person's name, like Alexa, for example, uh, allows a stronger relationship with your customers and a more natural conversation. On the other side, a new brand needs to be built up from zero. And this means high effort and high expenses from the marketing point of view. What was important for the decision which we were to use were also the technical prerequisites. So you must have uh, at the end a good recognition rate. You must avoid to have too many false activations, etc. And uh, our challenge was also that our wake word would need to work for all the different language regions of Switzerland. So we have a French speaking, German speaking, Italian speaking, and also a lot of expats which speak English here. So this Hey Swisscom has to work for all the regions. And so at the end, we decided to uh, build on our existing values and trust and not to choose a new brand. And that's why we went live with this Hey Swisscom. So just mentioned, we have uh, different languages which we need to support in Switzerland, beneath High German, French, Italian, and English. We also wanted to support the Swiss dialects. We have like seven main regions in Switzerland and seven different, quite different German dialects. And we, so we trained also our own ASR model for Swiss German dialects. 
we had to train, of course, every single ASR model with all the different skill entities, for example, the TV channel names or program titles, movie titles, and so on. The customer can only choose one ASR model, one speech recognition at a a time. So the menu language which he chooses for the TV UI will also be the speech recognition language, which is active for the voice assistant. What we then do after the uh, customer has spoken a specific sentence is that we show the transcript, what we have understood, what the ASR has understood on the TV screen. So we show the transcript there. So the customer gets a confirmation of what we have understood. Swiss German is transcripted into high German since it would be very difficult to show a transcript of a different Swiss German dialect. It's also easier for the NLU in the next step to recognize uh, what the intent of the customer is. So the intent or the, the NLU part of the voice assistant platform recognizes the intent of the customer and decides which skill needs to be addressed. Was it like a TV request? Was it a smart home request? Does the customer want to listen to music, etc.? What we tried is to use as less as possible invocation words. For Alexa, uh, for example, you mostly have the name of the skill to invocate that skill. Since on, uh, we focus mainly on Swiss commuse cases, we didn't want to have a, a specific skill invocation uh, names in front of the sentence since the conversation wouldn't be uh, very natural. For example, I don't want to say, uh, hey, Swiss, come tell TV to switch to BBC One. So we just wanted to switch the channel directly so you can say, hey, Swiss, come switch to BBC One. And this can be quite a challenge since you have some interactions between some uh, sentences. For, for example, uh, switch the TV on could also be a smart home command. So we did focus on Swisscom products and services. And these are the skills that we are covering at the moment. You can uh, steer your TV with a lot of different uh, use cases. You can steer your smart home devices. You can listen to music such as uh, our radio channels or Spotify. You can watch and steer your uh, photos and videos which are stored on our cloud service, which is called MyCloud. You can do a uh, telephony over the voice assistant and you can also steer your Wi-Fi on internet and have, for example, your guest password shown on your big TV screen when you have guests at home and they want to log in into your Wi-Fi net. Then we also have a news platform, which is called Blue in CH. So we also integrated this platform so that you are able to ask for the latest news. And we also own a weather platform on the search.ch, which we use for the weather forecast. Also an important part of the our voice assistant is, of course, the voice. Here, we decided to build a neural text-to-speech voice together with Microsoft. We did this for German and French. This covers more or less like 90% of all the usage of our voice assistant. And for Italian and English, we took the default voices from Asia, also from Microsoft. Then we also did some sound design. We created some functional sounds, including intros, outros for some skills. For example, if you are asked for some TV recommendations for tonight, we have a nice intro sound. And then we have separation sound between the single tips. And we have an outro sound when the audio output is over. This makes the old skill a little bit more appealing and sexy. Which were the main challenges that we met during the project? Well, the time to market was for sure a very challenging fact. We only had 10 months to develop this product. Remember, like in the beginning of last year, our VP marketing and products told us, so I want to have something before Christmas this year. And so we uh, created this project team and uh, we really built up this voice assistant from zero. And 10 months is quite a short time, cover all the components I just mentioned before. Then we had a a lot of teams which were involved, over a dozen of interdisciplinary teams. We had to, to coordinate all these teams which were working in parallel on other projects. Then the different languages in Switzerland are for sure very, very challenging because you need to do everything like four or five times. This uh, affects the ASR models, also the wake word models. Even if we have only one wake word, you need uh, a wake word model for every language region. And we also had four different NLU models. And for the TV skill, we also had a huge amount of different entities. Can imagine we have around 
30,000 different program titles, movie titles, which change every week within the TV program or the video on demand catalog. Another big challenge is to support if different languages within the same model. So even if the customer can only choose one model, for example, he chooses German, but then you might have English movie names or French uh, actor names within the request of the customer, like show me movies with Gérard Depardieu. So the model still needs to recognize, okay, show me movies is English, Gérard Depardieu is a French name of an actor, and you need to cover both of them. So this is quite a challenge. Then the multimodality. We have the big advantage that we have a big screen in the homes. This is a big USB for us. We can interact also with the screen and show something to the customer. But of course, this makes the experience design even more challenging. So you need to UX design for the voice, for the conversation, but also for what you show on the screen. The neural text-to-speech, which we created together with Microsoft, was also a very interesting project and a challenging project since we kind of cloned an existing voice, which we are using for our IVR system. And here you get into some ethical issues with the voice talents, which need some new contract, which are not there today, since you're kind of copying, cloning their voice. And you might do anything you want with this voice. So it's very dangerous if voice gets into wrong hands. And we also had the challenge that last uh, summer there were a lot of bad news around uh, the transparency of the data, which is used for this voice assistant, uh, Google, Facebook, Amazon, uh, Apple. They all created bad news because people were missing transparency around the data and uh, a lot of terms and conditions were changed. And we also had to change a lot, for example, the onboarding screens, which we showed to our customers. Our data terms and conditions around the data privacy uh, had to be changed to also be on the same level as the new data privacy of the other big players. I would take over again. Ricardo, thank you very much for this insightful presentation of the Swisscom Assistant. And uh, as Ricardo already showed, uh, Right now, it is very challenging actually to build your own voice assistant. And we think, however, that it is really worth to do so because what are you doing in the end? Basically, you're entering your customer's living room. You're really putting a brand representative into the living room of your customers who's directly talking to them, very intimate form of communication. So how do you do that? How do you train the representative of your brand that talks to your customers in their living room? So what we think is... Well, you first need to understand your user and especially you need to understand how they talk. Then on the other hand, you need to define how your brand should talk to the user. And then basically you need to link these two, these two partners of conversation through great conversation. And you do that by using the power of language. That's one reason why actually in, in, in our company, in the UI agency, we call ourselves voice architects. Because we really believe that besides voice UX designers, which look at uh, how do you establish a natural flow between two conversation partners, it really makes sense to include specialized linguists that basically teach a machine how to understand the user and that empower brands to harvest all the little subtleties of language. And if you combine these two disciplines, you arrive at that job of a voice architect, uh, which basically tries to take the communication between brands and their customers to the next level. So just to give you a short glimpse of the power of linguistics in voice design, I wanted to show you one, uh, one small slide that one of our lead uh, voice architects, Dr. Laura Dresen, recently presented in a course at the University of Applied Sciences in Lucerne, also in Switzerland. Uh, so this is just to show you that we have many different linguistic sub-areas which impact these, these different parts of the voice process that Ricardo already talked about. And then you have different application fields of, of linguistics that go back to all of these uh, areas of, uh, of linguistics. And basically, if you do that, at the end, what you want to achieve is uh, you don't want to only cre create an assistant. Uh, in the end, what you, what you want is you want to create really an ambassador of your brand. Um, and uh, Ricardo already also hinted at that. Uh, basically, you do that by, on the one hand, looking at what is the voice identity of my brand. So this is about giving your brand really a voice. And if you want a, a visual analogy, this would be like the face of your brand. 
And then you still connect that with what we call sound identity, which I would say gives your voice its melody. And if you, if you stay in the, in the visual picture, it's basically the hair and the makeup around the face of your brand. And if you combine both well, then you arrive at what we would call auditive charisma. So taking an assistant to an ambassador that is charismatic, that really represents your brand well to your, to your customers. And if you want to go a little bit uh, deeper into that, the, the quote that I showed at the beginning was from this episode 151 of the VoiceBook podcast, where Barbara, Hassan, and me talked a little bit more in depth about the design of custom voice assistants. So whoever is interested in that topic can just uh, scan that code here, that QR code, or later on possibly go to the link. And then you can listen to the discussion that we had with Brett Kinsella about this topic. And actually, Ricardo and Miha, the technical lead of the Hey Swisscom project, will soon uh, also be a follow-up episode of the VoiceBook podcast. So you can be, stay tuned for uh, more interesting insights on the Swisscom assistant. And so to summarize, we really think the age of assistance is now. Basically, the question is going to be, which experience will your assistant stand for? We had this slide in the beginning, so... I basically want to end this, hey, who's next? Make my, what's it going to be experience unforgettable? That's the question that basically I want to pose to every big brand out there today. And with this, thank you very much from, from my side. It was a pleasure to present here at Voice Global. And I hope we gave you some interesting insights into the design and development of custom voice assistants. Thanks, Christoph, and uh, bye-bye to you.